All right, let's finish up composite functions. So technically we were doing like f of g or g of f, um, but you could do like three or four or five composites. So this next one, as weird as it is, we're saying g of f of g of x. So essentially we're starting with x, we're gonna use the g function and get some output. We're gonna take that and we're gonna use the f function and then we're going to do one more time and output in G again. So it's basically just a multi-level function or machine, right? We're going through multiple machines. So we're just kind of going to start from the inside and work our way out. Um, I didn't ask to find domain, but I will remind you of how to find domain. So we're going to do G of F of G. And so we're going to start with G of X which is one over X. And we're gonna plug that into F. So just kind of work our way out. Um, are there any domain restrictions though? At every step, anytime you do an input, you do domain restrictions. So at this point, I cannot plug in zero. So we'll just keep note of restrictions as we go through. So let's plug one in over x into f. We actually did this one above, but we're gonna do it again. So we're gonna replace x. So don't touch g, just have it hang out for a little bit. You could even do this on the side if you wanted to. So you don't have the g there. So we actually just did this above, right? Remember we multiplied top and bottom by x. do it on this side. All right, we can multiply by LCD to kind of get rid of the fraction in a fraction, and we get 4x minus 1 over 2x plus 1. And x can't equal negative 1 half, right? 2x plus 1, which gives me negative 1 half. We did this in the previous example. So now we have two restrictions on domain. X can't be zero or negative one half. We'll just kind of keep track of those, come back to them. Let's highlight them in yellow or something so they stand out, so we remember. So then we have G of this funky thing, four X minus one over two X plus one. So we have one more input. So we plugged in one over X, we get this, and now we're gonna plug this in back into G. So we're gonna plug all of this in. Let's do green. This is my input, and I'm gonna input it into one over X because that's the G function. So one over four X minus one over two X plus one, as weird as that is. Huh. So we have a fraction and a fraction, so we multiply by LCD again, which there's only one, so 2x plus 1, and those cancel out, 2x plus 1. So 2x plus 1 over 4x minus 1 is my final answer, and technically I didn't ask for domain, but why not? Good practice. Um, so we already know x can't be 0 or negative 1 half, because those were restrictions before. Um, and now there's one more restriction because 4x minus 1 can't be 0. So every time you do an input, you have to find new restrictions. So what is this? 4x can't be 1, so x can't be 1 fourth. So my domain is x can't be 0, negative 1 half, or 1 fourth. So every time you do an input step, you got to check domain. Um, so that one was tricky, but... It was just doing the composite function an extra time. All right, and one last important skill for calculus um, is kind of figuring this out backwards because it's gonna allow us to do some cool calculus stuff. So now I have functions that once were composite functions and I wanna find those composite functions. So we, want, we have h of x and we wanna write it as f of g of x. So we're trying to find the inner function which looks like the whole inside, and then find the outer function. 
So on my first example, I think that whole polynomial kind of looks like an inner function. So I would say my inner function, which is g, is what's inside x to the fifth minus 2x squared plus 1. And then f of x is my outer function. So I'm going to write it as a box. And then what function is that? It looks like something squared, right? And so f of x is just x squared. But if I replace it with g of x, it turns into all that. Because my outer function is just the square motion. Cool. Let's try one more and see if it makes a little more sense. So g of x, that's my inner function. Looks like 5x minus 1 to me. And then my outer function looks like a square root function. So it's not the square root of 5x minus 1, it's just the original square root function, which is square root of x. But if I were to plug 5x minus 1 back in, I would get h of x. Um, so it's just getting us used to looking for these patterns. I Like, do you see two different functions happening, right? I see a linear function and I see a square root. So the linear is inner and the square root is outer. And that's the end of composite functions. So lots of practice in the book. See you in the next section.